Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning on from two mathematics. Our topic for today is inequalities. So today we are just going to start the basics of inequalities. We are going to see some simple inequalities and their representations. And then we have to do a few practice questions on the same. So let's begin. So inequality, some of the inequality are symbols. So we have greater than, the symbol for greater than looks like this. And then also we have greater than or equal to. Whenever we have an equal to, you can notice the sign has another line at the bottom. And then we have less than, and then we have less than or equal to. So the statements connected by these symbols are usually called um, inequalities. Uh, so when we look at like simple statements, uh, these are statements that usually represent only one condition. Later on, we are going to increase this and see what happens if we have different conditions. So the ones that have the same condition, for example, if you have x is equal to 3. So the first thing that you do, you draw a number line. So let's draw a number line. And you can start that number line at any number as long as the numbers that we require are there. And then we have the negative side as well. We talked about the number line in Form 1 lessons. You can go back and check that. So you've been told x is equal to 3. So we are going to go where 3 is. So when you come here, when you are showing x is equal to 3, we usually use either a bold circle or an open circle. Whenever we have a bold uh, filled dot, it means that it's, that number is part of the statement. Whenever it's, um, it's a circle with a space in between, it means that number is not part of it. But in this case, you have been told x is equal to 3, so it is very specific. It's x is equal to 3, and that is where the circle will be, but it's going to be fully uh, circled completely, telling us that the x is 3. There's no other number apart from 3. If we look at the case where x is greater than 3, if we draw the same number line, Let's draw the same number line. And you can see x is greater than 3. Since the value of 3 is not part of it, we are going to go where 3 is and then we are going to draw a circle, but it's not going to be filled. And this x is any number that is greater than 3. So we are taking all the numbers that are over 3. So we are going to draw a line, a bolded line, and then you show with an arrow telling us that it's any number proceeding from 3 onwards. But you notice in my circle, I have not fully like covered it fully like to show that it's part. So it tells us that 3 is not part of the value of x. 3 is not part of it. So it is any number above 3, any number above 3, because x is greater, greater than 3. Let's look at another way. We have x is less than 3. So we are going to draw the same number line. And you have been told x is less than 3. So you go where x uh, 3 is, and remember it's any value that is less than 3, and 3 is not part of it. So we are going to draw a circle that is not fully like covered, like it's not a fully uh, shaded one, and it's going to be any value, any value below 3, and 3 is not part of it. So that's how we show that in the number line. Let's do x is greater or equals to 3. So this one is going to be a bit different, as you notice. So 
So we have been told x is greater than 3. So we go where 3 is. So we want values that are greater than 3. So we are going to draw an arrow showing that values of x are increasing gradually. But the question is, is 3 part of x? So in this question, it's greater or equals. So it tells us that 3 is one of the numbers of x. So x can be 3 or any other number above 3. That's why we fully shade the circle completely. So see the difference between the number that you've just done and this. And then finally, x is less or equals than 3. So we we'll draw the number line. So x is less than or equal. So we go to 3. It is less. So you take all the values that are less than 3 and then you show with an arrow. But now the question is, is 3 part of the value of x? So we have been from because of the fact that our statement says is less than or equal. The word equal tells us that 3 is part of it. So when we shade the circle, it's going to be fully shaded. So x can be 3 or any other number that is less than 3 on the number line. So that's how we present that on the number line. So let's look at other examples. So we have uh, x is less than 7. So you drew that number line. So we are going to go where 7 is, and it's any number below 7. So our, our arrow should go. It, you can push your arrow continuously, but it is continuous. So any number below 7. And you can see because it's x is less than 7, 7 is not part of it. So when we draw a circle, it's not supposed to be filled. Let's look at b. x is greater than negative 3. Now our values are on the negative side of the number line. So you have been told x is greater than negative 3. So you go to where negative 3 is. So it's all any value above 3. And if it's above, you know it's going to move to this direction. So our arrow is going to move in that direction. So is negative 3 part of the value of x? No, because there is no equals. So we put just a circle. And then we go to x. Number C, x is less than or equal to 0. So we show that. So x is less than 0. So this is where 0 is. Any value stays than 0. So you pick the negative values. And then you put the arrow. Is 0 part of it? Yes, because there is an equal sign. So this is all the values below 0. 0 and below 0 are can be values of x. And then we go to x is less or greater than negative 5. Once again, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. Then we have 1, 2, 3, so you have been told x is less than negative 5. So this is where negative 5. So our arrow is going to move to this direction. And is negative 5 part of it? So because there is an equal sign, it means 5 is also part of it. So let's do one decimal, then you can do the rest on your own. So x is less than 2.5. So your number line can have the 0.5 values. So we we'll go to where 2.5 is. So x is less. So our arrow is going to move in this direction. 
is 2.5 part of it? No, because there is no equal sign. So our circle is supposed to be not filled. So regardless of what you have been given, either a whole number or a decimal, you can still work with it. The only difference you need to remember is, is it a full value? Is it fully uh, shaded or the circle has been left open? So you can check out more revision questions, of course, plus the ones that I've left out, uh, you can work them out. And also notes on the app. Uh, see you in the next lesson.